Ahoy there, Captain Benzie here, coming at you with another video for Eve Echoes. Now this video is going to be answering a few questions and concerns around cruisers, whilst covering how I would outfit my stabber. I've had quite a few people send me messages about cruisers, so I thought I would just roll them all into one video and discuss the sort of the benefits, the pros and the cons, and some of the problems that people have been having. Now before I jump into this video, please do remember that as with all my other content, this is made entirely on a Razer Phone 2. That does require a fair amount of hard work and effort, and I am trying to give you guys as much help with the Eve Echoes beta as I can, so that we all have a massive head start as soon as the game hits live. Now if you'd like to help me out, you can do so by hitting like on the video, subscribing to this channel, commenting what you've enjoyed um, and what you would like to see in the future in the comment section below, and of course sharing these videos with your friends. I know a couple of you guys are already running pseudo corporations outside of the game. Do share my content if you're enjoying it. Let me know what you're enjoying and where to go from here. Of course, come join me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, all the other social medias you see down below like Patreon and Discord. I would be happy to have a chat with you guys at any time. Right, anyway, that all said and done, let's jump into the meat of this video, which is talking about cruisers. Now, first things first, what are cruisers? Well, if we jump into the ship tree, you'll see here on the Mimitar ship tree, same with all the other races, of course, but it's divided into a couple of different branches. Now, the first branch that you have access to is, of course, the Corvette. In Mimitar's case, that is the Reaper, and then up to the various different frigates, which for Mimitar are things like the Rifter um, and the Slasher, that kind of thing. From there, you can move into destroyers. Now, destroyers should be fairly obvious for most people. That, of course, includes my beloved Thrasher and Thrasher 2. And then finally, here we come to the various different cruisers. So cruisers are bigger ships than destroyers. They're meant as kind of that midpoint between the frigates and the uh, destroyers and the battleships and battle cruisers. Now, cruisers themselves being medium sort of ships, they have a few benefits and uh, like pros and cons weighed against them when compared to the smaller ships. Now, things like destroyers and frigates are, of course, very small. That makes them very agile and nimble, and they can dart around quite quickly, but they tend to be fragile, and of course, their guns aren't quite of the same scale, so do less damage. Now, that means that when we come up to something like a cruiser, like the stabber that I'm going to be talking about here, then yes, the guns are going to be bigger, the ship is more sturdy. It is a slower moving ship though, um, and it does have a couple of drawbacks to it, which are ultimately the issues that people have been having. Now, the main issue that a lot of people have been saying is that they've upgraded to various different cruisers, and they've noticed that their DPS has actually dropped, and they're having a harder time doing some of the encounters. Why would that be? Well, first things first, and I really shouldn't have closed the ship tree for this, there are numerous reasons for that. Now, I know a lot of people have said, you know, hey, Benzie, I've been doing your video, I've been using your loadout for Thrasher 2, I've got great DPS with it. When I tried going up to another cruiser, my DPS massively dropped. Now, mainly that'll be because, obviously, if you're running a Thrasher 2, you've got here that 50% small projectile turret damage bonus, and for every skill point you've put in small projectile turret operation, you're getting additional projectile turret damage and tracking speed. Now... This means that if you're using a Thrasher 2 and you're using my loadout, chances are you've been heavily investing in small turret, uh, projectile turret operation skills, like uh, operation and upgrade, that kind of thing. So, of course, you have massive damage, whereas you might not have put those same skills into effect for the cruisers. So if I jump across to the skills tree now and we have a look at this, into the main thing, into we'll start with weapon technology and projectile turrets, you can see there straight away I've got five ranks in small projectile turret operation, five ranks in advanced small projectile turret operation, and five in small projectile turret upgrade. Now the turret operation means 20% damage, 10% tracking speed, 10% optimal range, followed by then an additional 10%, 10%, 10% with an additional gyro stabilizer duration, and an additional 15% turret upgrade there. That's a lot of additional damage just from the skills there that then the ship itself also amplifies. Now, in my case, yes, I have also gone for medium projectile turret operation and advanced medium projectile turret operation and medium projectile turret upgrade. So for me, yes, again, I've got additional damage there from my medium projectile turrets um, and like additional tracking and additional fall off, that kind of thing. That's all here as well. But ultimately, a lot of people who, when they first upgrade, they won't necessarily have those skills. Of course, if you don't have the skills to get the most out of your turrets, then you are going to notice a DPS decrease there. 
Now, the second part of that is obviously that if you've gone into something like a stabber, as you can see, the skills that it has, our medium projectile turret operation gives me additional accuracy fall off and a reduction to activation time. That's nothing to do with additional damage like the Thrasher has. Um, and the cru Cruiser Command bonus just gives me additional shield. So again, that showcases that it's not something, you know, it, it's not getting as much raw DPS as my Thrasher 2 is. Now my Thrasher 2 is sitting on about 305 DPS. You can see that my Stabber here is only on 225. Now that's running with uh, three Mark V 425mm auto cannons, and to my shame, I'm still running a civilian 425mm auto cannon up there. Now, the, the thing to note here, and one of the big problems that people I, I'm hearing when they've gone from using destroyers and frigates up to cruisers, one of the big problems that people are hitting, and without necessarily realizing it, is that they're missing their targets all the time. Why is that? Well, that's because when you go up to using medium auto cannons here, if you look at the tracking speed, tracking speed on these things is a piddly 46.13 uh, basic. Now, with my additional skills and the one here fitted, you can see that goes up to 60.54, but that is still a far cry from the like 120 to 200 odd that my uh, ones have on my Thrasher. Now that's because the Thrasher is designed as a fast moving ship. It's going to be orbiting at a fast speed, it's going to be orbiting at a close range, so the comparative velocity means it needs a fast tracking speed in order to pummel its target effectively. Now this has the counter effect that when you're using the medium turrets here on a stabber for example, that very slow tracking speed of 60.54 means that if you're shooting at things like other frigates and destroyers that are orbiting at say 5km or 6km around you, you're going to miss all the time. If you're having issues with one of your cruisers, check how often you're missing. And the chances are you're missing because your tracking speed is not up to scratch. And that's not your fault, that's just how it works with cruisers. Cruisers are not designed for taking out frigates or destroyers. So if you've gone around in a cruiser and you're trying to do encounters that are primarily up against frigates and destroyers, you're gonna have a tough time. As soon as they get close to you, you're gonna have a tough time having your uh, turrets actually track onto them. Now I do have a video, as I've mentioned before, coming out soon on missiles, and you'll see that missiles are going under a very different issue at the moment. Missiles don't really have this option with tracking speed. Now that means that one of the most popular cruisers out here at the moment is the Caracal. Let me open this one up, and I hope I get the right one, not the trainer. There we are. Caracal has medium missile damage, medium missile flight time. This ultimately, as far as cruisers go, if you've upgraded into a Caracal and you're now using missiles, you're going to be doing a lot better than perhaps if you've gone into something that is using turrets still, simply because missiles don't really have that same problem with tracking right now. There's a bit of a bug with missiles, possibly. Um, as I've seen arguments back and forth on this that the whole explosion velocity and that isn't working as intended, or that it's not been balanced properly for uh, the missile cruisers. But for turrets, yes, you will have a tough time tracking fast moving targets if you are going up against like if you're going ratting and most of your targets are in frigates or destroyers you should probably be in a frigate or destroyer yourself that said when it comes to fitting i have made a couple of allowances that help with that which we'll cover in just a second the point i'm ultimately trying to make here is that frigates and destroyers are ultimately still what i use most of the time I still spend most of my time jumping backward and forward between uh, encounters, ratting and anomalies and all of that in my Thrasher 2. It's still my ship of choice even though I have a uh, in, even though I have a stabber. I've been fitting out my Thrasher 2 and upgrading that for more and more damage, not my stabber. And that's ultimately because most of the anomalies and things I'm finding are against frigates and destroyers and it does well enough. That said, there was one of the story missions, the Min first Minmatar story mission and put you up against a couple of very heavy e-warships and, and a couple of very large waves that included other cruisers and, and a lot of little frigates and things, uh, slow moving ships mainly, um, but it meant that uh, I really, really struggled. Those cruisers and the little ships combined really, really like pelted my Thrasher 2. I changed up to uh, the uh, the stabber here on screen. I went out and did that mission and I cleared the first two waves very quickly. There were a couple of ships that I struggled with at the end and there was a, I think it was a Gisty Air War, E War or something like that that was just, it was orbiting a little too close and all it was doing wasn't even damaging me. It was just using an energy Nosferatu and orbiting at very close range so I couldn't hit the blasted thing. I actually had to 
<laughs> sort of pause that mission, jump out, put the uh, put the Thrasher 2 in dock near the mission status, jump in a Corvette, fly back, grab my Stabber, did the first couple of waves in my Stabber, then cleaned up the last using my Thrasher. I didn't use the Thrasher overall because the Thrasher had very low uh, hit points and was being nearly destroyed in each of those waves. The Stabber, however, because as you can see, if I jump into its stats here under its defense, it has significantly higher defense than the Thrasher does, a 6047, meaning it could take just that little bit more of a beating. Now, while we're on this page as well, it's worth me talking about why I have fit things the way I have. Now, as I said, please forgive that additional turret there. That will be a Mark V as well, as soon as I can afford them. For some stupid reason, they are going very expensively on the market right now. Um, and with me doing all of my other videos and trying to like make content on other things like drones and that, um, yeah, a lot of my money's gone into other things other than my stabber, as I said. Uh, so, yeah. Now, the four, low, the four high slots, therefore, would all be the same turret. As I've discussed in other videos, keeping all of those as the same turret is absolutely vital. You do not want to be splitting your turret types. As for mid slots, well, mid slots, ultimately, I've gone for a stasis web of fire. If you've watched my video on E-War, you'll understand why, especially as I've just been talking about how tracking speed is an issue when it comes to using cruisers against smaller targets. Now the stasis web of fire here, you can see flight velocity bonus minus 57%. I hit someone with this um, at an optimal range of 13 kilometers. If I hit a target with this, they drop to less than half speed. That means tracking a slow and moving target is going to be much, much easier. I combine that with one of my low slots here, which is it's loading to it now, the Marketeer tracking computer, metal, uh, metal level five, this little bad boy, Ultimately, what this does is that gives me a tracking speed bonus. I mean, it does give other things as well, like fall off bonus and optimal range bonus. But all I care about is that tracking speed bonus. I whack that and the web of fire at the same time when I'm up against frigates and destroyers. That slows them down enough and speeds up my turrets enough that I can do some heavy damage. Beyond that as well, um, obviously I've gone up to a Mark V medium shield booster. Um, I will be going to other things as well. As you can see, the other slots are empty right now, so we'll discuss those in terms of the market. Once I scroll down to the bottom, I've got two other low slots and one medium slot. So what would I be putting in those? Well, just like turrets, um, where you've got the small versions and you've got the medium versions, the same is true for low slots and mid slots. So of course, shield boosters are something I'd want to do if you saw earlier, then shield boosting is, uh, obviously shield tanking is what this particular um, ship does well. I've got the Mark V shield booster in there already. I would then move into things like, uh, not shield extender, sorry, shield hardeners, uh, the adaptive invulnerability hardener. As you can see, what these do is it says here, boosts shield resistance against all damage types. Penalty using more than one of this module, blah, 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 boosts shield resistance against all damage types. That's what I want equipped into that slot, just in case I start going up against something that is doing uh, electromagnetic or thermal, I can pop this on um, and my shields will start absorbing those a lot better. That final slot then would probably be something either like a damage control once those are in, um, or indeed something like an afterburner just to get closer to the target because cruisers are that little bit slower um, than other ships. So if we go down there, you can see a medium afterburner, like a Mark 310 Mega Newton afterburner. Um, that's what I would equip into that fourth low slot. Now, as for the medium slots, the mid slots, well, they're sub weapons. As we've seen, I've got the uh, Web of Fire on there for uh, E-War. Yeah, I could theoretically slap a warp jammer on there. Um, a warp jammer is not necessarily a bad idea, especially if I'm gonna take my cruiser and go ratting. Um, or uh, not ratting, sorry, go PvP hunting for miners and stuff like that. But that's not really what I'm using it for at the moment because I'm going PvE. The Energy Nosferatu is going to be a smaller bet for me. So a Mark 7 medium Energy Nosferatu is what I would be looking to add into that second low slot just so I can slow the enemy down um, and I can then also be uh, absorbing their energy to keep mine going. So you'll have seen on that page, on the fitting page, um, I do not have a stable capacitor currently on my cruiser simply because I need to uh, skill a bit more into uh, cruiser engineering to get that capacitor and power outgrid uh, put up there. 
Now, of course, in addition to all of this, the Stabber does have rig slots. Now, rig slots are something that I would recommend possibly fitting into something like a Stabber, simply because it's a bigger, more expensive ship. And this is going to be very true when I eventually get my greasy mitts on a Hurricane as well. Let's have a look at what rigs I would put in. Now, obviously, I don't have rigs fitted at the moment. As I said, I've been spending my ISK on other things. I've had other priorities, but this is a video people have been asking for. What would I fit into a Stabber? So let's have a look. For me, weapon rigs are going to be the uh, two of the most important things I put in there. Damage, as I said, is important for me. Um, things like the projectile ambit extension, accuracy fall off, I'm not overly worried about that, nor am I worried about a metastasis adjuster for the power grid requirement adjustment. What I'm more interested in here are the proje uh, projectile collision accelerator for that additional damage. Um, and the burst aerator there for the duration activation time adjustment so that it fires more frequently um, and it fires at higher damage. Those are two of the things that I would consider putting into, uh, into the power grid rigs. Also under defensive rigs, I'd be looking at something like the core defense operation, either for making my shield booster work faster. Um, I would consider going down to the core defense field extender simply to get my shield being bigger. Theoretically, you could, having said, you know, I've, well, I've got shield boosters and I've got shield uh, fittings and all that in there, maybe I should put something in for my, uh, for my armor. You could put something like a Trimark armor pump to up the additional percentage to armor hit points. I wouldn't recommend it. I would stick with going with something like the core defense field extender just to get that bonus to shield. I mean, if, if you've got a very large shield already, then 25% of a small armor or 25% of a large shield, that's going to be a bigger amount. If you're worried about going up against a lot of things like electromagnetic or, uh, or thermal things that otherwise would ignore your shields, again, you can go for an anti-EM screen reinforcer, which massively ups your shield's damage resistance in regards to electromagnetic uh, damage types there. That could be something useful for you. Mechanical rigs on the other side, there's not much I can really recommend at this point in the beta. Industrial rigs are very much more based around like mining and things like that. You can see here it's all mining rigs. Um, electronic rigs, there's not overly much I can really recommend here. Most of these don't do anything yet. They exist in the beta but don't actually have an effect yet because scanning's not properly in. Under engineering rigs, yeah, I could uh, rig in some additional capacitor bonus. Um, rather than worrying about skilling up into uh, cruiser engineering, but it's kind of a patch to, to fill what my skills are ultimately going to do eventually anyway. That said, if you're not worried about building into cruisers and you want to go straight from destroyers to battle cruisers, or, you know, that kind of thing, yes, the engineering rigs could plug that gap. Things like dynamic fuel valves, activation cost adjustment for your warp uh, afterburner and micro warp drive, if you're using either of those, it could be useful. Um, the auxiliary thrusters aren't a bad idea, actually, on a cruiser, um, just because it gives you that extra flight velocity, you know, you're moving that a bit faster simply because your uh, cruisers aren't particularly nimble ships. So auxiliary thrusters and polycarbon engine housing could be useful. Um, cargo hold optimization, obviously, if you're going to be running around, do I've actually got one of those on my Thrasher 2 at the moment. Um, just because I do a lot of the delivery encounters whilst I'm out, uh, I, I just run encounters for money. Um, and the cargo hold optimization means I can carry more whilst doing all the combat encounters as well. Higgs anchor, that's agility multipliers, flight velocity adjustments. These aren't things I would overly worry about. I mean, there's some nice things there if you've got money to burn, but uh, the, I, I kind of feel like the cost of them is more than the usage currently. That said, if you're going to be going into using your cruiser heavily, then yeah, that could be effective. It could be very useful for you and might be worth your time. Now, as I said, one of the things I did want to just mention very briefly, there is a video coming out on missiles soon, um, and that is that one of the most popular cruisers at the moment is the Caracal. That's because as it currently stands, me uh, missiles are a little bit, I would argue they're a little bit unbalanced <laughs> right now. Um, the damage that they can do and how they track, I don't feel has been tuned properly. Um, certainly, if you're looking to get into a cruiser to start running high-level anomalies, then the Caracal is one that you won't really go wrong with. You could go into the Caracal Trainer if it's a little bit cheaper. Ultimately, there's not all that much different between the two. I would stick here mainly with the main Caracal, just because it's got more in the way of high slots, and then skill into, into your mis uh, medium missiles. If I jump, jump into my skill menus right now, 
you'll see I haven't been doing this. Um, if you go into missiles, you would be looking then to go into medium missile operation, uh, medium missile upgrade to get the most out of your missiles. And then, of course, as we come across to um, the cruising technology, you'll want as many levels in cruiser command as you can do. Um, and certainly things like in engineering, cruiser engineering can be useful as well. As I said, if nothing else, just for the fact that it gives you that little bit extra uh, capacity, uh, capacitor capacity, power grid output, um, those are your main uses. The, the warp capacitor cost is nice, but mm, it's mainly the, the, the just the standard capacitor and power grid outputs uh, bonuses that make that super useful. Anyway, I think that does really just about cover everything that I was being asked about cruisers. Hopefully that's answered a couple of the questions and concerns that I know some of you guys were having, um, like using a cruiser and struggling with some of the encounters and missions. As I said, this is a gorgeous looking ship. I love how the Stabber looks, and I do wish that I could make a bit more use out of it. I will be running for a bit more cash, and I'll get it all kitted out with it there, all the rigs and stuff like that, maybe do a bit better. Obviously, as we're getting closer to uh, me hitting tech level 8, tech level 8 does then unlock battle cruisers for me. Um, namely, well, not just battle cruisers, it does unlock. If I jump through to the ship tree again, we're going to jump out of this into the Minmatar ship tree. When it all loads through, there we are. As you see, currently it's greyed out, but once I hit tier 8, oh boy, there is that hurricane. I'm already skilled heavily into medium projectile turret optimal range and uh, the accuracy fall off and the damage. Um, I've got those skills already. I just need to uh, go into advanced medium projectile turret operation. Actually, no, I have five skills in that already. Um, Battle Cruiser Command is one I then want to look into, but that's for uh, electronic countermeasures, which is another topic for another video. But boy, am I looking forward to getting this bad boy added to my little fleet. The Kane is my favorite ship of all of EVE. Um, I'm glad they've changed it back into a turret boat. It's got some fantastic stats and that on it now. Um, the attributes and fittings, I mean, that is just beastly. I cannot wait to get that equipped and do a video on that. And that'll be where I go here after cruises. Anyway, as I said, I do hope that answers all the questions you had. If you do have further questions or think I've missed something or misrepresented something, drop the questions into the comment section down below. Come find me on Discord um, or on... Uh, like Twitter or whatever. Um, I know a couple of you have reached out to me. There's been a few times I've not been able to respond. Obviously, with the Christmas period and New Year period, I've been very busy with friends and family. Um, I've not been as active on social media as I would like to be, obviously, with you guys around. But there we go. I will try and answer as I can. But if I do miss you, please don't feel bad for poking me a couple of extra times just to make sure that I'll answer. Anyway, thanks you. Uh, thank you ever so much for watching, folks. Happy sailing and see you in New Eden.